Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and we love helping the well-dressed take care of their wardrobes. Thanks for all your comments and questions that you guys have posted on our YouTube channel. After reading them all and answering as many as possible, I've selected five that we're going to feature in today's Q&A video. Each of these individuals will receive a complimentary pair of our Sovereign Grade shoelaces as a token of our appreciation for their participation in our channel. The topic of today's Q&A video is going to be about a truly essential component of shoe care, shoe trees. Remember, if you have any questions or comments while you're watching one of our videos, please ask them in the comments section. I try to get back to as many of these questions as possible. And of course, if you have any questions about shoe trees, this is the video to ask them in. The first question in today's Q&A video is from Tommy Tuber. Uh, thanks, Tommy, for your question. It reads, as a college student, I've gotten by with plastic shoe trees or stuffing newspaper. Maybe it's time to get a cedarwood shoe tree. Are there many benefits? A great question, Tommy. Uh, I feel that shoe trees are one of the most essential things that you can invest on to really take care of a pair of shoes. And the beautiful thing about a pair of shoe trees is once you buy a pair, you know, it really will last forever. I mean, there's very little that can go wrong or wear out on a shoe tree. So I highly recommend uh, investing a few extra dollars to invest in a really high quality wooden shoe tree that you know that you'll be happy with for years, if not decades. So Tommy, I really applaud your resourcefulness and you know, using a plastic shoe tree or newspaper uh, is absolutely the right thing to do uh, if you don't have a proper pair of cedar shoe trees because it's better to do something than nothing at all. Now the primary reason to use a wooden or a cedar shoe tree is that of course the wood is much more rigid than plastic or newspaper and is going to do a better job really maintaining the shape of the shoe. The second benefit of a cedar shoe tree uh, is its moisture wicking capabilities, right? So cedar is a very absorbent uh, wood. And so after you take off a pair of shoes, it's absorbed quite a bit of moisture throughout the day as you perspire while you're wearing your shoes. So it's important that you allow that moisture to escape the shoe and don't trap it in there. Now the cedar shoe trees that we sell here at The Hanger Project uh, are the Ultra model from Woodlore. It's a $34.95 shoe tree, uh, which is actually an incredibly uh, good price for a shoe tree of this quality. Uh, this same shoe tree in Europe would be at least twice as expensive. And what I love about the Ultra is it's a traditional split toe shoe, right? So it's going to fit a wide variety of different widths. It has a very high vamp, which is going to support the forward part of the shoe. It's got a very nice kind of deep spring to the barrel, so it's going to again provide that tension. And the most important feature of the uh, Ultra shoe tree is it has a very generous and round heel, right, that's going to distribute the pressure evenly over the heel of the shoe, uh, which will help maintain that shape. What I don't like are the cedar shoe trees that are very narrow in the back, because inevitably what you have is all that pressure pushing on a very narrow part of the back heel, which can deform or distort the shape of the back of the shoe. Tommy, great question, uh, and I totally support investing in a few pair of high quality cedar shoe trees. Uh, you know, if you've just graduated college and don't have money to uh, purchase them for all your shoes at once, you know, it's something that you can easily do over the course of several months. So Tommy, great question, and I look forward to sending you a pair of our Sovereign Grade shoelaces. Our second question today is from Jeremy Emilio, and it reads, how tight should shoe trees be? So Jeremy, great question. It's a question that we received often here at The Hanger Project. Uh, and the answer is, is that you want your shoe trees to really be as tight as possible without being uh, so tight that you really have to force the shoe tree with a lot of effort into the shoe. Now the reason you want your shoe trees to be tight is again, you want that uh, tension in the spring of the barrel to really pull that shoe tree flat to straighten all the wrinkles and creasing out of the vamp. And so I'll show you here, I've got actually three different sizes uh, of our cedar shoe trees. I've got our small, which would be recommended for something smaller than a nine or a nine and a half. I have our medium, which is recommended for about a, a nine and a half to about 11. Uh, and then I have our large, which is recommended for 10 and a half, 11 or larger. Now I wear a US nine and a half shoe. 
And so this is a pair of my Gazzione and Girling shoes, and you can see there's very little creasing across the vamp here, and the reason is because I use shoe trees. Now the purpose of the shoe tree is after you wear a shoe all day, you're gonna take it off and it's gonna naturally kind of bow upwards, right? Because you've been flexing the shoe. And so the purpose of the shoe tree is to straighten that shoe flat to pull the creasing out of the leather so that as that leather dries after you've worn it, remember it's been absorbing the perspiration of your foot throughout the day, that those creases don't get uh, memorized into the leather. So it's important that your shoe tree exerts enough tension to straighten the shoe. So let's say, okay, so you've worn the shoe all day. This is the small, which uh, is honestly too small for this shoe. So I'm putting it in here and you can see it really just drops right into the shoe. There's not much tension, there's not much compression. I can still crease the shoe, right? So it's not holding much tension on that shoe. That shoe tree is too small, right? Now, if I take the large, which is too large, uh, for one, you can see that the front forward part of the shoe tree is too wide for the particular shoe. That's gonna be the first problem, so it's not going to insert itself all the way in. And then second, I'm having to really compress the barrel almost 100%, right? So I've got, if you see this fully compressed, literally uh, less than one centimeter, probably half of a centimeter of room and I really have to work hard to get that in there. Now that shoe tree is too large. If you look at the medium, which is just the right size, I like to push that shoe tree in and then I'm going to extend that barrel. And as you can see, it still flexes a little bit, but not much, right? And so this shoe tree is the perfect size. So a little trick after you insert your shoe trees is that I always take my shoe and just flex it flat. So again, that's just helping uh, to provide a little bit more tension to straighten that shoe and allow that shoe tree to fully expand inside to ensure that it's properly uh, seated into the shoe. Now, Jeremy, if you have any questions about the proper size, take a look at our sizing guide that we have on all of our shoe trees or feel free to uh, call customer service or send us an email. We're more than happy to walk you through the sizing process. And as with all of our products here at The Hanger Project, if you order a pair of shoe trees from us, just like with hangers and it doesn't fit perfectly, we're happy to exchange that totally free of charge. Jeremy, great question, and I look forward to sending you a pair of our Sovereign Grade shoelaces. Uh, our third question today is from uh, Companor97, uh, and his question reads, does it matter if the shoe tree is the last of the shoe or would a generic, for the lack of a better term, be okay? I'm guessing yes, but then what exactly is the difference? Thanks. So this is an excellent question. So there's several different styles of shoe trees. Uh, you know, the, the highest end shoe trees, uh, you know, the highest quality that you can get uh, is a bespoke, fully lasted shoe tree. Now what that means is that the shoe tree is literally a copy of the last that the shoe was built around. So the shoe tree perfectly matches the shape and the silhouette of the shoe. So this is a pair of my bespoke George Cleverly shoes and it of course comes with a fully lasted shoe tree. And so what you can see is that there's no spring. Uh, it's normally hinged and the reason is because this last perfectly matches the shoe uh, there doesn't need to be any spring in the barrel because that's what allows a shoe tree to fit a range of sizes. And so uh, the other benefit of a fully lasted shoe tree is that whenever you insert this into the shoe, you know, again, it's going to perfectly restore the shape of the shoe. So you can see there's almost no excess. It's coming all the way up the vamp of the shoe. Um, super high quality shoe tree. Uh, if you ever buy a pair of bespoke shoes, uh, you would never not get the fully lasted bespoke shoe trees. Now, of course, a bespoke pair of shoe trees is going to run you several hundred dollars. You know, at John Lobb St. James, they can cost as much as a thousand dollars for a bespoke pair of shoe trees. So, you know, you're only gonna get those on bespoke shoes, uh, but it's worth the investment if you're spending several thousand dollars on a pair of shoes, a few hundred dollars on a pair of shoe trees uh, would be, you know, penny wise and pound foolish not to buy. Now the next level of shoe tree is something that's called a fully lasted shoe tree, but it's not a bespoke 
shoe tree. And a great example is the Gaziano and Girling shoe tree that actually came with these shoes. Now what that means is that this shoe tree is developed off of the last that this shoe was organized around but they come in a variety of sizes, so there's a little bit of variation in fit. Normally, a fully lasted shoe tree is going to be made one uh, size of shoe tree for every size uh, that a shoe comes in, or every size and a half to two sizes. And so you can see there's still a little bit of spring in this barrel, uh, but there's a lot of shape to the shoe tree. Uh, and it really, again, it has that square toe that you see with a pair of Gazzianos, a high lamp, Great shoe tree. A shoe tree like this is going to run you about $150. Now, coincidentally, we have a range of shoe trees that we sell here at the Hanger Project that are developed by the same company in Northampton that makes Gaziano shoe tree, and it's really designed much in the same way. Now, it's a, a much more full shoe tree, similar to this double barrel, you know, nice, you know, round heel, beautiful finish. And so, if you want this look, but you know don't have a pair of Gaziano shoes, uh, then the shoe trees we have uh, are incredible options. So the next level of shoe tree uh, is uh, our traditional cedar split toe shoe tree. Now, honestly, the majority of shoe trees I use in my closet is this uh, ultra shoe tree. It's a split toe cedar shoe tree. For $34.95, it's an incredible value compared to the $150 you would spend uh, for something like this. Uh, and functionally, it's gonna work just as well as a, a fully lasted shoe tree. I mean, almost, almost just as well. And the benefit of a split toe uh, and the long single barrel is just that it simply allows this shoe tree to fit a wider variety of shoes. I mean, since it wasn't made for a particular shoe, you know, it's gotta be able to fit a variety of widths, which is what the split toe allows. And it's gotta be able to fit a variety of sizes or at least a range of size. And that's what the single barrel does. And then after this, you know, would be your traditional uh, cedar shoe tree. It uh, doesn't have a split toe. It probably has a more narrow heel. Uh, and, you know, it's a great shoe tree if that's all that you can come by. Uh, but the cost difference between that uh, and something like this, you know, really top of the line cedar shoe tree that we carry uh, is really less than 10 or $15. And so uh, it's my recommendation that you just invest a little bit of extra money and get something that you're gonna be happy with and that's gonna take great care of your shoes for many, many years. So great question. Uh, I hope that explains kind of the difference of the spectrum of shoe trees all the way from your bespoke, fully lasted shoe tree, uh, all the way down to your traditional, just kind of generic uh, cedar shoe tree that you might find at a department store. Uh, and I look forward to sending you a pair of our Sovereign Great Shoe Laces. Uh, our fourth question today is from John Alvin, and it reads, there are a lot of different kinds of shoe trees in the market, and some most likely are not as good as others. What models do you prefer? Why do you prefer them? And are there any kinds of shoe trees that you would stay away from? Thanks. Uh, great question, John. So um, you're right, there's a lot of different shoe trees in the market. We just explained kind of the full variation uh, in the last question. The only thing we probably didn't mention were plastic shoe trees, uh, which are great for travel because they're lightweight, uh, but aren't something that I would recommend for long-term storage. And so in all honesty, my favorite shoe tree isn't the most expensive one we sell here at the Hanger Project. My favorite shoe tree, again, is just this simple cedar ultra shoe tree. I mean, it's everything that a shoe tree needs to be. Um, uh, it's affordable. Uh, it's going to have uh, offer all the support that you need uh, for a pair of shoes. Now, if you want to invest in a more expensive shoe pair of shoe trees because you can or because you like the aesthetic of the higher level of finish uh, and kind of the more fully lasted look, uh, by all means, I mean, they are better shoe trees. Uh, but this uh, ultra shoe tree right here offers you everything that you need uh, in a proper shoe tree. So John, uh, you know, the type of shoe trees that I would generally stay away from are, are either plastic shoe trees or shoe trees with, uh, without a split toe and a very narrow back uh, of the heel. Uh, you know, those are the two types of shoe trees that I would absolutely avoid. A great question, uh, and I look forward to sending you a pair of our Sovereign Grid shoe laces. Our last question today is from Nick Mariano, and it reads, I have cap toe uh, creasing on several well-fitting shoes. How can I avoid this? So a great question, Nick. Uh, so depending on where the uh, crease is occurring, uh, it could be for several reasons. So this is an Allen Edmonds uh, cap toe uh, with a semi-brogue. 
And as you can see, all shoes are going to flex at the ball of the foot. Now, if this cap is too far back, right, it's designed incorrectly, or if it doesn't fit correctly, you can end up with creasing across the cap of the toe. Now that shouldn't be happening because traditionally this area is hard countered. And what that means is that there's a stiff piece of leather that reinforces the cap of the shoe so that it doesn't crease. But depending on how it fits and how it was designed, you can end up, you can end up with creasing into the cap toe. If that's the case, there's really little that you can do to prevent that creasing. It can become annoying because, uh, for instance, if you have a nice mirror shine, but then the cap is flexing, uh, those hard waxes are gonna crack. And so the only thing that you can do is really just pull that mirror shine forward ahead of that crease point. Now, if you end up with creasing across the vamp of a shoe, like what you have right here, uh, shoe trees can help resolve that problem. And it's not that it's going to be that it prevents creasing from occurring. It's just that a shoe, pair of shoe trees are just going to help minimize the appearance of that crease because after you wear them, you're gonna stretch that leather back straight and it's gonna prevent those uh, creases from permanently forming across the vamp. And of course, you know, any conditioning of the leather or polishing, anything that's going to nourish and condition the leather itself and keeping it soft and supple will help minimize those creases by just ensuring that that leather is soft, supple, and is able to be stretched back straight. Nick, great question. Uh, we'd love to see these shoes uh, that you're speaking about. So if you wanna snap a photograph of them and post them on Instagram and tag us, uh, we'd love to check those out. Thank you for your question. I look forward to sending you a pair of our Sovereign Grid shoelaces. Uh, once again, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone for their comments and questions. It's your engagement on our YouTube channel that make these Q&A videos possible. Uh, it allows us to take a moment to acknowledge my appreciation for everyone's involvement in this channel. I've absolutely enjoyed this platform, especially how it's allowed me to connect with you guys and directly interact with you and answer your questions. And remember, if you haven't taken an opportunity to ask a question or make any comments, I invite you to do so. Even if you don't have any questions to ask, just sharing your opinion or your thoughts about our content helps me make better videos. I read all those questions and comments personally and really do enjoy getting back to as many of them as possible. In today's video, I'm wearing one of the first suits that I've had Chris Despis make me. It's a bespoke suit and a dark charcoal with a really fine herringbone pattern. This is one of my favorite suits. I've gotten so much mileage out of it. And for someone that's looking to develop a wardrobe, this would actually be one of the first pieces I'd recommend they start with. It's incredibly versatile. I can wear it during the day, at night, to a wedding, to a funeral. Uh, there's uh, very few occasions where this suit wouldn't be perfectly appropriate. Uh, it has a notch lapel and with a working buttonhole and behind the lapel you can see that it has a, a loop for a, a flower. Working buttonholes, tab trousers with a single uh, standard pleat, uh, and uncuffed trousers with a slight break which create a more formal look. Now the jacket has besom pockets and today I'm actually tucking the flap into the pocket to just give the jacket a more sleek formal look. I'm wearing my signature white Charvet shirt, but today it has French cuffs uh, with gold cufflinks uh, that my wife gave to me as a gift. The tie I'm wearing today is a Kirby Allison Sovereign Grade tie uh, that is a burgundy Macclesfield. I'm wearing a pair of burgundy silk socks that we offer here uh, at the Hanger Project with a double pinstripe. An absolutely beautiful pair of uh, socks. And what I love about silk socks is their slight sheen. Perfect for more formal ensembles. My pocket square is a silk pocket square from Kent Wang. And then my bespoke George Cleverly seamless hole cut shoes, which are really quite miraculous. It is a um, very special shoe made entirely from one piece of leather. There's not a single seam on the shoe, including the heel. Uh, and the uh, semi-broke design that you see is actually punched into the upper. Uh, they aren't separate pattern pieces. So beautiful pair of shoes and a shoe that you'll really only find bespoke from someone like George Cleverly. I have my gold uh, Calatrava uh, Patek Philippe watch uh, and one of my favorite pins, the Waterman uh, gold and black Lalique uh, Elegance. And today I'm wearing our new 18 karat gold sovereign grade collar stays. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications by clicking the bell to the right of the subscribe button so that you can learn whenever we release new videos. If you have any questions or comments about anything we discussed on this video, please ask them in the comments section below. 
And of course, please visit hangarproject.com where we have the largest, most comprehensive collection of luxury garment care and shoe care accessories in the world, as well as many other incredible products for the well-dressed. And while you are there, subscribe to our newsletter to receive notifications of new product launches, promotions, as well as a weekly digest of all the videos we publish here on our YouTube channel. I'm Kirby Allison, and thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm.